Welcome yet again. The weeks are rolling by another Raw Wednesday. Welcome everybody. I have my coffee. I have my computer. I have you guys. So if you've been watching, thank you very much. If you haven't been watching, I don't know really what to say to prepare you other than it might be boring, it might be interesting. I don't know. But to start off today, we're going to look at the what is it two weeks ago challenge which was to shoot wide open and we've had a couple of entries which always makes me happy because we're so early in this game and uh, for everyone that that goes out of their way to take a picture with this in mind <clears throat> and then upload it to instagram and hashtag it so i can look at it and share it with everyone else Thank you very much. So this is brilliant. So this was mine, uh, my attempt at shooting wide open. I had the 15mm uh, Lauer lens <clears throat> and I just handheld standing over this puddle and um, basically looking at the reflection of the trees above the puddle yet slightly blurring out of this uh, rocky surrounding. So that was that was my attempt at shooting wide open. That was a f2 on a 15 mil lens. Uh, this one here is again from Lucy, my good friend Lucy. Thanks again, Lucy. Lens and gems, give her a follow. And um, this time, she, her challenge, obviously, shooting wide open. She says, focused on some kind of flying insect on the flower, which blurred out its surroundings and. She took this on her phone, which is not an easy thing to do. Um, you know, kind of combined a bit of macro photography uh, with shooting wide open. And really nice, Lucy. She kind of edited it by the looks of it to darken out the background a bit, really highlight the flower with the insect on it. And that's the beauty of shooting wide open is that you, you create that separation of a subject and uh, this is what this has done here because of that separation it really highlights the flower and the insect more than the rest of the image so thanks for that Lucy really good and then we've had another entry here from Yubu Hack 123 so thank you Yubu Hack I don't know if that's how you pronounce it or different <laughs> YBU YBU HAC under toi maybe that's how you pronounce it but anyway um, this is cool you've obviously kind of used um, I say obviously I'm I'm assuming uh, through experience <laughs> that you've used some kind of long telephoto lens to really zoom in Hence why we have this really kind of small section of uh, field, uh, of depth of field. That's the phrase I was looking for. Only this section here is in focus and then it super quickly falls out of focus, goes super blurry. Got some really nice bokeh or bokeh, bokeh. Uh, so if you haven't heard that term before, bokeh, uh, bokeh, whatever you however you want to pronounce it it's a term used for the kind of the beautiful blurry out of focus parts so that's what we have here some nice bokeh and uh, also some nice sharp bits of water here and also because um, the way water reflects light quite nicely all these big round blurry bits are the um, the the what you, specular highlights so the really shiny bits of, of light reflecting off the water combined with of um, the blur factor of being uh, a shallow focus or shoot wide open really exaggerates these like ball balls of light as it were so really nice really like that Yubu hack one two three. Thank you very much for both of you for joining that. Now, 
let's look at the raw images I took this morning, even though you're watching this a few days later. And um, yeah, what I did, I did look at these beforehand. I thought I kind of get lost in just <laughs> fiddling around with them a bit, which is a bit boring for perhaps the viewer. So I did pick three to edit, but we quickly look through. This is just um, a kind of a pre sharpness kind of making sure I focus correctly and the composition's right shot which I could use if I wanted but then I shoved on um, and there's another one there which is quite nice but then I shoved on the ND filter to the six stop so I went from 0.4 of a second to 30 second exposure and it's really if you compare these pictures you can see with the long exposure it's really calmed down this water and also the clouds have gone a bit blurry so that's what uh, an ND filter can do if you've ever wondered about that and perhaps for some what you could do let's go back what you could do in this situation because sometimes it's nicer to have the static cloud kind of retain a bit more detail rather than blurring it out but but you do want the blurry sea because it's nice and calm and kind of like an ice pond almost so what you could do in Photoshop you edit them both separately and in Photoshop you can combine the sky from one onto the bottom half of the other and then you've got the best of both worlds but for today's purposes and to save a bit of time I'm just going to edit the one picture which uh, I chose to be so we got a few frames here as the morning went along uh, just to mention these little balls of light here the Sun was just rising up in the corner here and the, the angle it was kind of hitting the lens it was causing these uh, basically light random light to bounce around and cause uh, these balls uh, as far as I understand anyway so what I had to do I had to take another shot placing my hand as like a shade from the Sun and took another uh, shot and th therefore I don't have it in this one the one I chose to edit is this one because we just got a nice bit of gold light over here some nice um, kind of light in the sky here uh, other than that is the rest of it is all the same down the bottom then I moved up along the cliff and I took a few different frames um, between three and four hundred mil shooting across the land uh, you can see all this heavy mist here sitting on the land this beautiful color in the sky some clouds dotted around a few houses and I was using this kind of uh, wall here as kind of part of the composition now I'm unsure but I might just completely crop that out and really crop in hard and that's the handy thing with having a 42 megapixel camera that you can really crop in and not really lose any detail uh, so this is the next one I did where I zoomed in a bit more but then I chose oh no I chose this one the first one at just uh, over 300 mil f10 0.1 of a second ISO 50 why because it's just a bit wider than these other two I get a bit more sky in them so I may choose to crop with with the sky as the major part of uh, the composition and then here we go here is my macro shot which in hindsight I don't know if it's really macro I macro is such a different uh, discipline to what I've been doing which is you know part of doing this challenge is to learn new skills and really um, you know increase the the learn curve how fast I'm learning and that's to do things out of your comfort zone that you're not used to and that is what's happened with this just because looking at this if I zoom in we can see how there's parts in focus 
around here but then because we're so zoomed in and so close and we're really kind of we have such a thin depth of field instead of being perhaps this wide we're like razor thin so millimeters matter to whether something's in focus or out of focus and this is the mistake I've made here even though I shot f11 I really need to have been shooting at f16 and higher uh, because when you're getting so close and the tolerances are so small you really have to open up or shut down the aperture as it were um, to get as much de depth of field as possible so we'll see what we can do with that one um, <laughs> it's not my favorite image I've ever taken I'll be honest especially compared to the more traditional images we took this morning so I'm just gonna s I've already uh, picked them by putting a one next to them so let's edit this first one here so let's have a oh, uh, I, I keep forgetting about lens corrections so I use the 24 to 105 there and there is a slight fall off on a slight vignette so I just adjust for that these kind of details I always forget about I'm more concerned about getting in and editing the picture rather than the technical bits of it so we've got a very dark bottom half of the image here the top half what well, that could do with brightening up as well and if we look at our histogram it's all nicely sitting within it so there's nothing's clipped on the dark and nothing's clipping on the highlights either so let's bring up the exposure uh, half a stop there so it helps bring up the brightness at this bottom half but what I'm going to do first thing easy peasy I am going to create a layer L which will then give me a gradient of shift as I pull it up so it's all nice and level or 45 degrees or 90 degrees or whatever rather than freely doing it so that's a handy thing with the shift key put it there M typical put it wrong way around no no that was the right way around what am I doing I want the bottom half let's bring it up so it's kind of clipping into the sky slightly maybe So now let's bring up, I can bring up the exposure, let's do that around two thirds of a stop, let's bring up some shadow about there, still quite dark on the cliffs but then they're in shadow as the sun is rising up behind. Do I want to do anything else? I'm gonna. Oh, I do like a little bit of clarity and structure. Just that's a bit. Now this lens at around f10, f11 is pretty sharp. I mean, look at that. You just basically at pixel level. That's pretty cool. And like they got diggers here. Where's that person? That person? Or just a, a sign or something? Um, there's the visitor center, which I may do something about because it's kind of distracting those kind of white, bright blobs. Now, sky. So, as I like to do, let's create another layer, and what I'm going to do, copy mask from the C, which is there, and then we're going to invert that, so we have the perfect corresponding gradient for the sky. Now, what do we want to do here? We bring a little bit of... 
dynamic range bring that highlights down a touch and then we can actually create a bit more separation by bringing up the exposure now saturation I mean that just looks not real but more than enough so it kind of has a little pop to it so around 20 um, now clarity with clouds sometimes I like to add but when it's so blurry and you, you're really making fluffy clouds even fluffier with the long exposure I think by adding clarity and you kind of lose a bit of that fluffiness but it does make them pop a bit so let's go there now let's just check our white balance it's probably okay now this may cause a problem because it's there we go always check your white balance kids that's made a massive difference so if I do uh, alt and that that will just temporarily reset it so it's very blue there as you can see which artistically you might prefer you might like that or that is the new white balance uh, after we've corrected it or what we could do the other option is is just affect one part of the picture can't wait to gray bit gray oh let's go let's go and bury the other way so you could just do the sky there mix and match it no I prefer it to the whole image Reset. Right. There we go. Apologies for any slurpy sounds. Now let's do some whole image changes. Do I want to add contrast? I see I'm, I'm very anti-contrast I almost like a very monotone look to the image rather than just like this extreme this do I want to add some saturation in the scene like bringing a nice purple kind of hue through along here where it's reflecting a reflection from the clouds above kind of like that cliffs just need a bit more brightening up happening opacity and flow 50 50 there let's bring up set a bit of sh bring up the shadows and a bit of exposure and just kind of paint on Adjust this so it looks a bit more natural. Oh, so annoying when you pick that, it moves, moves the whole mask. So annoying. Okay, okay, I like that. Doesn't look completely unnatural.
uh, I'm missing one of my favourite jobbies, which is the guides. I never know how to. Uh, Oh, does that look level? No. Let's uh, straighten using. So hard to tell. My eye says that that is now better. <laughs> it was slightly off on. There we go. I feel like that's better. There is an option way to. <sighs> that's so annoying. There is um, one of these guides, you can pick it up and adjust where it sits and I normally just make it sit on the horizon and that's the easiest way to see but I'm going to have to look into the help section to figure that one out and we get into that but that looks pretty good. Now I think I just need to, still a little bit of a vignette so Not quite a lot of them yet, really. Let's go around there. Very nice. Now, the final thing. What do we want? Could this work as a 16 by 9? Or, what, what you can do here when you're not sure about different changes, you can clone it. And now I can do like a 5 by 7. So, oh, look, we can kind of make them sit on the thirds like that. Or we could do another one, let's do a. It this way. I kind of like, like how this line comes in here, and then we can what do we like? They all kind of work. I think I'll just go with the traditional. What's that? Five by seven. I think I prefer. So I can delete them. There we go. That is five by seven, I believe. Okay. Or this is just sitting here. Do I really want to just do it more like this? Yeah, yeah, we go with that. We go with that. Oh, I just want to tidy up these bits here because from here they're just kind of a bit annoying. So what I'm going to do is Q, heel brush, and I just want to turn it into grass. Could 
could do a better job, but unless you're gonna print it up and really look into it, you're not gonna tell. So there we go. That them little highlighty reflections from the glass are now gone. Oh. Also, was there a spot? Dust spot. I'm sure, there was a dust spot. It definitely is on the next one. So, I can see one there. Uh, o. And there, is that like a smudgy thing? They've cleaned up nice. Now, first thing I'm going to do here is play around with the crop. I feel like this is the major player. We're gonna have them houses, they gotta be more part of the image. Because we're kinda of looking over the houses to the mist. Well the other option is how about this guys? like this no because it's like no it's no real context okay let's just go for I don't like this dead space here the bit of dead space here kind of like it. Again, forgotten to do the lens profile. Now they don't have the Sigma 100 to 400 profile on here. That's one of the annoying things about the um, Capture One <laughs> is the lack of lens profiles. Uh, so we choose something similar, the 120 to 400 Now I'm getting a bit sidetracked, but this house looks a bit skew with But I, d I don't want to get into that Let's just see if we can uh, straighten it Using the old roof line That make it better yeah that looks better now okay so really it's all about the sky so let's edit that sky no 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 now I can type in <clears throat> and again Uh, oh, we're right up there. So we want to bring in not too much. Just add a touch of shadow. Contrast. Saturation. Just. We're going to go a tiny bit. Clarity. No, see, I don't like it. Nice and soft, that's how I want it. Mm, okay, let's do a land. Copy. Invert. There we go, that's that. Um, bring up the exposure a bit. 
shadow a touch. And we're losing some kind of a bit of we need to add a bit of black in there. It's kind of two ways you can do it. You can do it with the levels down here, or I can do that, which does a similar thing. Kind of felt like I had a bit more control there. Um, yeah, that applies to the whole image, which I don't want to do. I kind of like that slight uncontrasty look. Um, yeah, beautiful sky, isn't it? Absolutely beautiful. Now let's check that white balance. It's kind of a white house, it's very blue. There we go, that looks a lot better. We go with that one, I'd say. And um, I feel that's all we can do for that one, really. Now this, I really don't know what to do. What I can do is we'll add a bit of structure in there, really help bring out a bit of the sharpness, a bit of clarity to make it pop as well. Contrast. A little bit. Do I want to add saturation? No. But we've pretty much got a black and white image, so let's excuse me. Let's enable black and white. See how it just like there's a blue cast to it and it just sucks it out. And now we can add some contrast by adjusting the colour sliders. See, a lot of these won't do anything <laughs> because blue was like the major component of that image. Actually, let's just double check the. Uh, I mean, it doesn't do anything, does it? There we go. Um, yes. Ah, there we go, because we're now in black and white, we're really add that contrast. Um, I, th I think square crop is the only way to go with this. Something like that. There we go. It's like a nine. Hmm. So there we go. Those are our free images. So if you watched all the way through, thank you. <laughs> Let me know which one you think is your favourite, or if you would have edited them differently, or chosen a different one to edit. Um, let me know. Perhaps in the future, what we could do is. Um, just to make it a bit more interesting, a bit more interactive with other people, is I could always share one of my RAWs from one of the photography on location shoots, and you guys can edit it, and we can have a look at them. That Maybe that's something we can do. Let me know if that is of interest to you. But thank you for watching. This week's theme currently is macro, so have a go hashtag it which is uh, JG hashtag JG I mean I just oh yeah hashtag JG macro is the hashtag this week so enjoy get out there take some pictures get raw raw Wednesday have a good evening folks ciao for now <laughs>